Welcome back, folks, to our weekly NeoVim plugin video. Uh, this is a series in which we are covering one NeoVim plugin per week. So I try to post a video every Friday, and this week we're going through a plugin called WitchKey. WitchKey.nvim. Um, this is a really cool plugin because it shows you what key mappings you have configured or what, what key mappings that you have set. And, uh, and it does it, it does so in real time. So if you have key mappings that require multiple keystrokes, it'll show you each mapping after each keystroke. So what does that look like exactly? Let's go ahead and open up this tab and I'll show you. Here we have uh, a little pane at the bottom of the NeoVim program that pops up every single time you press a key that is related to your key mappings. So if you press your leader key, a little window will pop up and then it'll show you what options are available to you after you've pressed your leader key. So after you press your leader key, you can press B for buffer, and then from there it'll take you to a new menu where you can have further key mappings displayed to you like buffer pick, buffer next, buffer previous. So it's just a quick way for us to navigate our key mappings. You know, our key mappings are growing in this video series. So, um, I think this plugin will be helpful to us to help us remember what those key mappings are. So in this video, we're going to cover how to install which key. We're going to cover uh, some configuration options and we're going to conf configure it in a way where our key mappings that we have for some of our other plugins, such as Harpoon or Bufferline, are included in this list. And we're also going to uh, cover some usage. All right, so let's dig in. Let me turn off my video here and uh, let's just go ahead and hop into our init.lua. In my init.lua, you'll notice I have a plugins. You'll notice I have a plugins file and you'll also notice that I have a plugin configs file. Plugins is where I like to keep all of my uh, directives for installing uh, any plugins. So let's go ahead and head into plugins there. I'll use my telescope plugin to go into the plugins file. And uh, you can see here that I have all of my used directives to install these several plugins that we've, we've been talking about. Um, we're, we are using Packer as our package manager in this video series. So we have to define these lines as used directives. So for which key here at the bottom, I went ahead and added it earlier and commented it. So for now, we're just going to uncomment this line using our comment plugin. So that's GCC. And uh, yeah, so now we have that directive in there. After we've put that in there, we still have to configure our plugin. So we're not done yet. Let's go into another file called plugin configs, where I like to keep my plugin configurations. And uh, you can see here, there, there are a lot of lines in this file. So I'm going to go ahead and code fold all of these lines using UFO. We talked about that plugin in an earlier video and use shift shift G to go down. And you can see here, there are a lot of configurations for which key and we'll talk about them now. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go into visual mode, go all the way to the bottom and do GC to uncomment everything there. All right. And go back up a little bit. And uh, yeah, let's talk about what's going on here. So, uh, which key has plugins in it of itself? So we're not just talking about the which key plugin, but within which key, there's also it, its own plugins that you can um, toggle on and off. So for marks, uh, you can mark files in which key, similar to how you do in Harpoon. We're gonna set that to true. You can show your registers, your Vim registers, in the which key pop-up. So we're going to set that to true as well. All right. And then there's also a spelling um, plugin. We're not going to go through this today, but you can set it to enable true suggestions 20, and it'll show you um, some spelling suggestions. This is useful for me. I, I'm a terrible speller. Um, and then some presets. Operate is true. Um, this helps you uh, look at key mappings for operators such as like change word, delete, yank, inner word, such like that. Motions, the, this will help you with your motions. So if you're new to Vim and you can't remember uh, all of the motions, then you can set this to true to have which key help you out. 
text objects, windows. So when you're switching windows within NeoVim, using I use Control W, it'll give you some hints on which uh, keys you can press next there. Uh, miscellaneous bindings to work with Windows. I'll set that to true. For folds, code folds, yeah, we talked about UFO. We're going to set that to true. And any bindings prefix with G, such as the comments plugin, uh, it'll it'll also show some hints for that too. So we're going to set that to true. Operators, GC, we're going to add the comments operator since we have that installed. And uh, some icons that you can set that that will be displayed in the uh, which key uh, pop-up then we have pop-up mappings how you can scroll in that pop-up using control d and control u and uh, some ui uh, parameters here border position margin and, and so forth all right so that is all of our configurations for which key but we're not quite done yet if you go into the github repository you can see, see here that uh, you have to set some Vim options in order for this to work. So we have to set timeout and timeout length. All right, so I like to keep all of my Vim options in a file called settings, settings.lua. So we're going to go into settings.lua. And at the very bottom here, I already have set my uh, which key uh, options here. So I'm going to go ahead and uncomment that using GC. And I've set timeout to true and timeout length to 300. All right, so you would think that we would be done. And yes, technically speaking, we are done. So uh, we're going to go ahead and quit Vim and uh, do a Packer install. All right, so it looks like I didn't save some of my files up here. You can see that this dot means that the file has been edited but not saved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my buffer line plugin, which we talked about last week. Press leader BL. And you can see this indicator on the buffer line has appeared. And so now I'm going to press P to go into plugins because that's the file that I haven't have saved and just saved it real quick. I'll do the same thing for plugin configs. Save. Okay. Now I can go ahead and restart my NeoVim. So I'll do that. Close Neo tree. Close that. Restart. All right. Well, what's it telling me here? Well, it's telling me which key is not found, uh, and I'm requiring it in plugin configs. So I'm trying to configure it before it's installed. That's okay. We're just going to hit Q here and let that proceed. Go into command mode and then type packer install. That'll go ahead and install the which key plugin. So you can see here it has been successfully installed. Hit Q to quit. And go ahead and restart NeoVim again. Cool. So we're here. Which key is installed? Now, what, what does it do? Okay. Well, my leader key in NeoVim is spacebar. So when I hit spacebar, you can see here that another pop-up came up at the bottom of my screen. And it's telling me what my options are for my key mappings that I have defined. So one of my options here is B. So what happens if I hit B now? I hit B. Oh, now it's taking me to another menu to see what my other options are for that key mapping. So L is one of my options. So I can hit L there. I can hit L there and I've done a buffer line pick. Great, what are my other options? So I hit leader key, leader key again. Looks like another option is H. I think we've set this for harpoon. So let's go ahead and click on H and yeah, all right, so telespoon, telescope harpoon marks. Now, also you'll notice here that it's not showing anything for N or for P. That was my next and previous binding that we set last video or a couple videos ago. And that's okay, we, that's because we, we have to tell which key what these bindings do. And that's what we'll do next. All right, so let's go ahead and close that. And let's go back into uh, key mappings. This is where I set all of my key mappings. So you'll remember in our last videos, we'll, we've gone in here and defined key mappings for certain plugins such as Telescope and Harpoon. Uh, let's take Harpoon as an example for this video. What we want to do is we want to tell which key, um, not only what our bindings are for Harpoon, but also what they are called in the menu. 
So let's take this first one here, Harpoon Mark, which we've previously used leader HX for. Which key doesn't know about this mapping yet. So I've commented this line out for now because we're not going to set the mapping ourselves. We're going to let which key set that mapping, and this is how we do that. So these are the lines that we're going to go over. Let's go ahead and uncomment that. So we've done local WK require which key. All right, so that'll pull in the which key module. And then there's this register function that we can use. So we do WK register, and then in there we give it a table. And then uh, the first key that you're going to give it is the hotkey that you want, that you want to start with, or um, the key that you want to start with. So H in this case, because previously we had HX as our mapping for marking files. So H will be our first key. The name of that will be Harpoon. And that's an optional group name that you can give it. And then we're going to give another key here, and that's going to be our second key that we're going to press. So X. X here, what do we want to do once X is hit? Uh, we want to run this function, which will require harpoon mark add file. And that essentially what it does, it marks a file. So here I'm going to give a description of that binding mark file. And at the very end of it all, as a second parameter, we're going to give this register function a prefix. And our, my prefix is leader key. So what, what's the saying here is that leader h x will run this function here, harpoon mark. So I'll be, har I'll, be, I'll be marking a file in harpoon. Cool. All right. Well, let's go ahead and save that and rerun uh, NeoVim. Now let's press leader. You can see here our H key has shown up. And let's press H. And now you can see X has popped up here because we defined that key mapping, mark file. Wow, that's pretty cool. So I hit X. All right, so that should have marked my file. Let's do leader H M for harpoon marks. And you can see here it marked in it.lua. That's pretty cool. So I, I can have uh, all these keys available to me here in a, like a, a quick menu. As soon as I press that leader key, as soon as I press any kind of movement button or window movement key, this will pop up. For example, let's open up uh, let's open up plugin configs in a V split. So that's Control V, and then now I will say I want to move my cursor from this window over to that window there. Well, I do Control W, and as soon as I hit Control W, you can see here which key has recognized that and given me the options for this window. So I can increase the height of the window, decrease the height. I can uh, I can do, let's see, go to the left window, go to the down window. So I want to go to the left window, so I hit H at this point. All right, so I'm going to hit H, and now I'm on the left window. So it's really cool. Which key can do all kinds of things with key mappings and show you all kinds of key mappings. I've really been enjoying the plugin, and it, it's pretty much in my essential workflow or essential to my workflow these days. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. I'm Alex Cantu. And that's our weekly NeoVim plugin. I'll see you guys next week.